podcast. We're here to pump up your writing. And now your host, Andy Brixey, personal trainer at The Writing Gym. Hey there, writers and muse daters. I'm so excited for this week's episode, where Annalisa and I really dive into the struggles that authors face when submitting to agents. Find out the main problem that agents, publishers, and editors have with submitted manuscripts how to make sure you don't make this mistake, and where to get the guidance you need to avoid it. Spoiler alert, it's all about making sure you have the right tools. Happy writing! So Annalisa, you talk a lot with different literary agents with your work in the writing gym uh, and as a writing coach. Can you kind of share with us their, their biggest issues and complaints that they have with manuscripts coming in? Sure, that's a really great question, Andy, because, you know, as you know, I am flying around the world. Uh, I'm in New York at least four times a year, in London at least twice a year, meeting with the major publishers and literary agents and editors and talking to them about what they're seeing, uh, not only trending in the marketplace, but what they're seeing trending from the author side and what they see. And, uh, you know, agents are people, first of all, and they enter their profession because they love stories, they love words, they love language, right? They're just sort of like English major geeks, and that's why they are where they are. Uh, you know, that said, there's a lot of frustration that they have, and one of the things that I hear most frequently is that authors are submitting manuscripts that are first first drafts but not final first drafts. So uh, maybe the author didn't even read through it or didn't know how to read through it, Uh, but it certainly reads like something that is unformed, not fully formed. Uh, And, you know, write this down, those of you who are listening, because this is a really huge hint. The thing that's lacking, uh, that they're complaining to me the most, is, is the craft, is the art, of storytelling, the art of pacing, how to weave together a story. So some of them might have a really nice concept or they've got a really strong voice, but the storytelling aspect isn't there. And if the storytelling aspect isn't there, then the piece just isn't going to fly. And, you know, these are experts, remember, uh, in the storytelling aspect of a novel. So you can't really fool them uh, into not not having that story. They're going to know. So in that situation, how does that impact the author's opportunity for success? You know, when that agent picks up that manuscript and it's, you know, still very raw and those elements of storytelling aren't there. Uh, that's a rejection. I mean, that, that's, that's going to the slush pile where that's headed. Um, you know, and, and that's unfortunate because for anyone who's submitted a query letter, you know, even getting a response to a query letter, even getting a request for pages or for a full manuscript, uh, which we call a full in the industry. You know, if you get a request for a full, like you are golden, like gold star, that's amazing. So then at that point to then be rejected after having gone through all of that work, you know, to have crossed through all of those gates or jumped over all of those hurdles, whichever analogy works for you, that's really frustrating because, you know, you're so close, you're in the home stretch and yet, uh, the storytelling just didn't stand up. And and it's easily avoidable. There's a lot that writers can do not to get stuck in that trap. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. I know that we've we've definitely heard a lot of those stories come our way through the writing gym. So it's always so sad and disappointing when people put all of their hard work and effort into something to to find out that, you know, it's it doesn't get to go anywhere. Um, with something that's so easily fixable, you know, something as as simple as craft and putting a little bit more storytelling and learning a little bit more about craft before taking that step of submission. Um, That's a really good point. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but, you know, the thing is about writing, Andy, and I know that you've seen this too, you know, as we've gone on this journey with so many writers through the writing gym, uh, is that because we've all been writing, you know, we, we all went to kindergarten, first grade, second grade, wherever it was that we started, you know, holding a pencil and telling stories because the teacher told us to. We think that this writing thing is something that anybody can do just because we've been doing it for a long time. And I guess that seems kind of reasonable if you think through that logic. 
At the same time, you know, if I pick up a hammer and a nail, that does not make me a carpenter. It makes me a person with a hammer and a nail. It doesn't mean that I know, you know, how to put together a wall of a house or how to fix a counter or whatever. I don't know how to do those things. Um, and, and yet so many people think that because they've got a little bit of training that they must have enough training. And in the same way that if I showed up to a job site with a hammer and a nail, I sure hope that that project manager would send me packing as someone who doesn't know what they're doing. You know, these people who think, oh, you know, writing's easy. I've been doing it since I could hold a pencil, you know, first grade, whatever. Um, they end up getting sent packing by the project manager, in this case, the agent, uh, because they haven't met the professional standards that are required for the job. Yeah. And it's hard when writers are starting out, you know, they don't know that they're making these mistakes. They're just, you know, jumping in and thinking, oh, I've got this, you know, like you said, learning to, to write wherever they wrote. And the, the thing is, you know, the skills that it takes to write a novel and master, you know, plotting and pacing and character arcs are completely separate from, you know, writing an essay or a short story, or a poem. It's all completely different. So they jump into these situations thinking, oh, well, I can write. I'm, I mean, you wrote a thesis or, you know, you wrote a dissertation, you know, to get your master's or whatever, and you've written this fully researched paper. So you think, I can write a book? No problem. Mm -hmm. And then you get to that point and you think you're doing great. And then you get that rejection back and you have no idea what went wrong. Um, so how do you help people out when that happens? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And, you know, your point is a valid one where a lot of the people who come to us come to us after having tried, right? So they either tried and they weren't able to do it, or they tried and they got to the point where they submitted, even to the point where maybe some of their pages were accepted. Um, you know, one of our recent graduates, you know, who I'm talking about, um, you know, got to the point with an agent where they were talking about which publishing houses they might submit to. And the agent pulled the plug and said, you know, this piece just isn't ready. You know, upon further reflection, this piece isn't ready. You need to know more about craft before we can do this. And, you know, as you know, Andy, she's been with us for about a year and a half working through this manuscript to resubmit to this agent and thank goodness she has that relationship to get it back to her. Not everyone is so lucky to continue in a relationship. You know, more frequently the agent just says no uh, without leaving that open door. So what do we do for people in that scenario who have been rejected? Well, we take them under our wing, we open our doors wide for them. And of course we're going to show them the craft. Right, This thing that we're talking about, the storytelling, the pacing, characterization, all of these elements of a quality story, we are absolutely going to show them. But the writing gym goes above and beyond because we're not just talking about good craft. We're also talking about the marketability of a piece. And that is uh, a moving target because there are some elements that are evergreen, that, that are just marketable, you know, for probably a hundred years. Um, and, and we know that that's true, right? Because if you think about Dickens, say, you know, if I, if I wrote the next Dickens novel and sent it off to XYZ Publishing, they would say, no way, Jose, way too long. Your sentences are too long. You can't have a paragraph that's one sentence long. We just don't write that way anymore. In Dickens' time, that, that was the standard. So the marketing trends change, and we need to really know what those are uh, and what we should be doing. So we're helping our writers to think about marketability and to really target a piece to marketability and to learn that quality craft. Yeah, and that's such an important element that when you're in the creative process, you, you don't really consider. You think, oh, I have this story, I have this idea, you know, I'm just going to get it out on paper. You don't, you know, you, you know you want a book, but you don't have the industry know-how or, in your case, the industry inside knowledge, you know, to, to be able to speak to these agents and these publishing houses and these editors to be able to have those connections and, you know, kind of have your finger on the pulse of everything 
in the industry so that when you come to these writers, you can say, you know, work on this, but you know, we need to kind of change this to make it a little more, a little more marketable. Um, yeah. And, and that makes such a difference. I had a funny image in my head as you were saying that, because I was thinking, you know, what would happen? You know, how I think about the world and analogies, but what would happen if I said, you know, Andy, I want to be a professional sports player. Right. And so I go out in the big wide world and, you know, first I show up in my baseball uniform and then I show up in my basketball uniform and then I show up in my football uniform and I just can't really decide what it is that I want to do. Right. So I'm scratching the surface of sports. I'm not really choosing any particular sport. I'm just kind of showing up a little bit without any real knowledge of, you know, what are the craft elements of baseball? You know, how exactly should I hold the bat and how exactly do I steal a base? And all of those things that professional baseball players need to know. If I keep trying all of these different things and pretending like I'm, you know, a little bit basketball, a little bit football, maybe I'm going to be soccer this week. Um, and, and that sounds absolutely ridiculous, one, as a goal, and two, as a life choice to sort of try on all of those different uniforms. But so many writers treat their writing that way, where they don't really get in depth in what's actually required to become that professional. I like that analogy. I've never thought of that before, but also the image of you trying to be a basketball player is hilarious. Um, <laughs> I would need a trampoline. <laughs> yeah, at, at, at minimum, maybe some stilts, and then and then it might work out for you. <laughs> so, so what are the the end results? You know, they they get to the point where they they learn the the craft, they have a little, you know, they have that insider knowledge of the industry. They know the marketability, marketability, you know, where does that lead them? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of our goals with the writing gym is that our authors live the author lifestyle. And one of the things that we mean when we say that is that they're independent, right? So that once they've written that first book or that first series that really takes off for them and establishes them in the marketplace, that they can continue to then do that and do that. They're in a relationship with an agent or a publishing house or both um, that allows them to continue that as a lifestyle and get out of it whatever they want to get out of it. Now, in order to do that, we need to be setting them up well for that lifestyle. We need to be teaching them the skills that are gonna be applicable time and time again to really create authors we absolutely don't want authors who are dependent on our help <laughs> for the rest of their lives. We want them to be independent. We want them to, you know, fly out of the nest and be successful. Now, they're always welcome to come back and visit and come on retreats with us and come to our open salons. We love when they come home to visit. But what we really want ultimately is that they're able to be independently successful. Therefore, our goal is to teach them well the skills that they need to up-level their writing career and become that author and live that author lifestyle. So besides the writing gym, is there another resource that you, know, you offer that people can take advantage of? Yeah, so I'm really glad you asked that, Andy, because we just introduced this new course. So the Writing Gym, you know, it, as you know, has several programs in it that take our authors basically from idea to sold. We're helping to, them to write that novel, we're helping them to revise that novel, to put together their publishing package, to then sell that novel in addition to the efforts that the publishing house has given them. It's a comprehensive program from beginning to end. What we wanted to do was to create a program it gave people an introduction to what they needed because so many agents, I mean, I talk to several every week and, and hear the same things every week. And I thought, you know, I've really got to do something 
to help these writers out here and to help my agent friends too, right? So they can stop being frustrated. Like, let's stop putting a square peg into a round hole and let's make this thing happen. So because I get to act as an intermediary every day between writers and agents, I thought, what can I put together that would help both of these groups of people who I care very, very deeply about? And so what I created, Andy, is a course called Fundamentals of Storytelling. Uh, it's a go at your own pace course. You can sign up right now um, and you can start right away. Go at your own pace. Get those fundamentals down. So at the very least, you're not making some of the egregious mistakes that agents are seeing. You know, we've got some videos in there. We've got uh, some handouts, some diagrams for people to use as they move through plotting their own novels and uh, several extra bonus materials that we included to really flesh that out and help people to understand what it is that agents are looking for and the fundamentals of, of a story. And all of this coursework is available online, correct? Yeah, so that's a really exciting aspect. So it's all online. Uh, you know, you don't have to show up at a specific time. You can do it in your pajamas and no one's going to know. Uh, if you're not in our time zone, if you're halfway across the world, if you don't have time this week, but you have time next week, sign up now. Take it next week. It will be there for you. Yeah. I love that element of it. And I also, I love that, you know, you say, I want to, I saw this need and I wanted to do something not only for the writers that I help, but for the agents that I speak to, because I've never thought of that, but it must be so unbelievably frustrating to be working with these writers and, you know, be teaching them craft and working with the people who are in the writing gym, but then speaking to your agents and finding out, you know, oh, we're going through the exact same rough things where, you know, it's the same mistakes over and over and thinking to yourself, like, how do we find a solution? No, most people wouldn't have gone that route. They would have gone, they would have gone in another direction. So it always amazes me how you kind of think outside the box and come up with ways to help people rather than, you know, hinder others. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you for that, Andy. You know, it's, it's really important to me, and you know that it's my mission to help as many people get their story out into the world and get it out well, and this is just a part of that effort to help everyone to tell their story well. I really appreciate that, Annalisa, and as one of the people that, you know, you help and talk to every day, I appreciate it a lot. Um, so we will, of course, put links in the show notes for everyone to sign up for this fantastic new storytelling course. Thank you so much for having us, Annalisa. I have had a great time with you, Andy, and uh, to all of the writers out there, I'm going to steal the tagline tonight, and I'm going to say, happy writing. If you like what you've heard and are interested to see if you're the right fit for the writing gym, here's what to do next. Head to www.datewithanews.com slash publish now and book an appointment to speak with our team. Here's how it works. We'll get on the phone for about 45 minutes and we'll get crystal clear on three things. The best way for you to publish, the best way for to, you to, take two. If you like what you've heard and are interested to see if you're the right fit for the writing gym, here's what to do next. Head to www.datewiththemuse.com slash publish now and book an appointment to speak with our team. Here's how it works. We'll get on the phone for about 45 minutes and we'll get crystal clear on three things. The best way for you to publish, the best way to achieve your publishing dream, and the exact strategy you should be using to reach your publishing goals. Remember, publishing a book well doesn't happen on its own. You need expert guidance to make it happen. We've helped writers all over the world to finish, publish, and sell their novels well all while sharing their unique story and making the world a better place along the way. To see if we can help you to do the same, head to www.datewiththenews.com slash publish now. I'm Andy Brixey, personal trainer over in the writing gym, and we'll talk soon. And hey, since you listened all the way to the end of this episode, here's this week's little quirk of the week. Kind of like a blooper reel, but not. I don't want to be a rat, but Annalisa has some amazing dance moves. In fact, she was part of a dance-off at my wedding. Thank you for listening to the Writing Gym Podcast. Happy writing.